Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 4.2.7, Configuring Router on a Stick Inner VLAN Routing. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Switching, Routing, and Wireless Essentials Cisco Version 7 Networking Academy curriculum. So in this particular lab assignment, we have two PCs on either side of a switch and that switch connected to one router. Now in module three, prior to this module four's assignment, we learned how to create VLANs. We learned the difference between uh, access mode and trunking mode. And we learn how to separate our traffic uh, on a switch between different VLANs. So we want that, that those PCs to only talk to the same other PCs in the same VLAN. Now, there are certain situations where we do want to cross over to another VLAN to talk to another computer. So to be able to do that, we have to involve a router um, to carry all of the VLAN traffic and go across different VLANs. Just like when we leave our router and want to go from one network to another, one subnet to another, we have to involve a router. That router can help us travel from one VLAN to another because technically they're on separate networks as well, especially if you notice the networking scheme there. PC1, VLAN 10, they're on the 172.17.10 network, dot zero network. Uh, VLAN 30, PC3 over there is on the 172.17.30.0 dot zero network. So they are on two separate networks as well. So we must involve that router. So this link here between R1 and S1 is going to have to carry both VLAN 10 and VLAN 30 traffic. So you can imagine we're going to set that up as a trunk link. Uh, here, FA06 connected to PC3 and switch one. That's going to be an access mode link, and it's only going to carry VLAN 10 traffic. The link here between VLAN 10 and P, or sorry, between PC1 and S1 carrying VLAN 10 traffic is also going to be an access mode link carrying only VLAN 10 traffic. So when traffic, let's say we want to contact uh, from PC1 to PC3. PC1 is the source, PC3 is the destination. The traffic is going to carry from PC1 to S1. It's only going to be v VLAN 10 traffic on that link. It's going to go up to R1. It's going to contact R1 sub interface. So what we're going to do is we see we only have one link there. We are going to con connect sub or create, sorry, and configure sub interfaces on G00 and R1. Um, when it does that, it kind of becomes the default gateway. So there will be a G0 slash 0.10 and there will be a G0 slash 0.30. So that one port can actually carry VLAN traffic for both of the VLANs and it becomes the default gateway for each one respectively. Now, with that configuration in the traditional inner VLAN routing, we would have needed an, a separate port connected from switch one to R1 for every VLAN that we have. Now we only have two, so that wouldn't be too bad. But if you've got 50 VLANs in a medium to large size network or more, that could get really troublesome because remember, switches have a lot of ports on them. Routers do not. So routers goals are just to route between different networks. Maximum you may have four or five connections probably to a router, but usually that's it. Maybe six, that's about it. Uh, with a switch, you usually have a lot more. So you can imagine that you top out with the amount of VLAN. So that's why they came up with a uh, router on a stick um, so that you only need one physical connection and you have a lot of sub interfaces. So we'll see how to configure those in this lab. So first we're going to review some commands from last module, module three, where we are creating VLAN 10 and 30 on the switch. It doesn't look like it really wants us to name it. Remember the naming is just for us uh, you know, as humans to, to look at and name it, but it don't matter. It just looks at the uh, number. Then it wants us to assign the access ports to um, the respective sides of S1 um, and then make sure we've got that configured. So let me zoom in here and then we'll get started. So on switch one, Now, I do recommend widening this window out in Packet Tracer. Uh, we're going to go do Enable, Config T, and to create VLAN 10, we just do VLAN 10, Exit. To create VLAN 30, we do VLAN 30, then type Exit. We don't need to name it. You could, but it's not necessary here. Um, then we also want to assign the ports specifically. So FA011 here is VLAN 10 traffic to PC1. So I'm going to do Interface FA011. 
So next we're going to put interface FA011 into access mode. So with switch port mode access. And then we're going to assign it to VLAN 10 traffic with switch port access VLAN 10. Okay. Now the other side, and you see it start negotiating there, the other side is FA06 carrying VLAN 30 traffic with PC3. So we'll do interface FA06. We're going to put it in access mode as well. And we are going to assign it VLAN 30 traffic. So we've got VLAN 10 over here, VLAN 30 over there. Now these still won't be able to talk to each other even though there is a path that you could go from PC1 to Switch1 and then Switch1 to PC3 because they're on separate VLANs. We wanted that to happen in Module 3, but now we want to be able to route them between each other involving this router. Now, not only are these ports red, but we need to configure sub interfaces here on G00. And that's the next thing our directions have you do is create those sub interfaces. Now, there is a specific type of encapsulation that needs to happen, which is 802.1Q, um, and that's just the name of the IEEE standard. So what we're going to do is go to R1 here. And again, we don't need to do anything with the physical interface yet. The book or the this lab has you actually configure the sub interfaces with an IP address and everything and then turn on the physical interface. I say do it reverse. If you turn on the physical interface first, you don't have to go back and make sure that the sub interfaces are shut down. Because if you do it reverse, if the physical interface is shut down, the sub interfaces cannot come on and work. So I'm actually going to do it reverse here. And I'm actually going to go in and this is G00 that we're operating with on the router. I'm going to go into G00 and I'm going to turn it on with no shut. You don't need any physical uh, configurations or anything like other than just turning it on. You don't need any IP addresses or anything. You notice here that we try to keep the naming scheme pretty simple. So for VLAN 10, we name it G0 slash 0. That's the physical interface. But then we just put dot and then 10. We try to keep it simple. So we're going to do interface G00 dot 10 for VLAN 10. It's always dot whatever VLAN number. And then you see it changed to up. If you had not turned on the physical interface, it would not have come up automatically. And then we'll do NCAP. I'm going to shorten up encapsulation. Dot one Q. And then you need to put the VLAN number. Well, this one's 10. And then we'll put the IP address from our address and table. You notice that this one and PC1 are in the same subnet. They're both on the 172.17.10. something network. All right, now we're going to do it for VLAN 30. So it'll be interface G0 slash 0, still after the physical interface, but this we're going to do dot 30, and you see it come up automatically. We're going to do NCAP dot 1Q, that's the same, but then we're going to do 30 for VLAN 30. And then we'll do IP add, and this one is 172.17.30.1, 255, 255, 255.0. So what happens is these sub interfaces become the default gateway for the PCs. So we want to make sure that our PCs also have that information in there. On S1, we also want to make sure that G01 is in trunking mode. So we would go to interface G01 and we would do switch port mode trunk. All right, because again, it needs to be in trunking mode for this connection to work properly. Okay, because remember, trunk mode can carry multiple VLAN traffic, and that's G01 there. We also, in a real world situation here, would want to make sure that PC1 had the right configuration, and we do here. The default gateway you notice is that sub interface. Same thing for PC3. The default gateway is that sub interface. So now we should be able to ping between PC1 and PC3. And we can go to command prompt here. And we can try pinging a lot. Let's see if our default gateway works. We get good reply. So that is PC1 being able to go up or over to switch one and go up to R1. 
Now let's see if we can ping 30.1. We get a good reply. So that's the same physical interface, but remember it is the other sub interface. Now let's see if we can go all the way to 30.10. And we get a good reply from PC1 all the way to PC3 and back. And we also have 100% in our lab assignment.